like, where have you been? When she raises up that rolling pin, run. But this time, I'm not going to induce any bodily harm with this guy. This guy is going to help me make Cardinal Piracas. You're probably saying, what the hell is that? It's a Karelian pasty, and we're going to show you how to make it. It's a good Finnish tradition. And we're going to do it right here on the Cooking with Sonic Blue show. And this is going to be the first Finnish recipe I've ever put together. And I've seen it being done on TV, I've seen, or not on TV, but I've seen it done on YouTube. And uh, when Tons of Terrawing suggested this recipe, I was like, oh yeah, I got to make that. So what we're going to do is we got a nice table laid out where we're going to do our dough up. Stay. Don't make me hit a rolling pin at you. And we have one cup of rice, regular long grain white rice. We're going to use two cups of boiling water. So, that's what we have here now. Let's add the rice. This will be the filling for our Kajilan Piracas. Go. Take your spoon. And stir it. Get it mixed in there really well. And immediately cover. Now we're going to cook this rice until all of the water is absorbed and uh, we're ready to go to the next step, which is adding two cups of milk and until the, the uh, rice becomes creamy and all the milk gets absorbed into the rice to where you're, not, you're left with a nice creamy substance left behind, that's what we're wanting. Now, we're gonna make, that's the filling that's gonna go into these pasties. In this bowl, we're gonna be mixing our crust and it involves rye flour, all-purpose flour, a little pinch of salt, white pepper, ginger, and then we have the egg butter, which involves two eggs, hard-boiled and chopped, and a teaspoon of butter, or a tablespoon of butter, I believe. So we're going to use the real butter this time, just like they would in Finland. Now, let's make the, the, uh, the dough, and all we need is a half a cup of water. So we're going to use this guy. No, Halligan, I don't want to play ball with you. Half a cup of water. Half a cup of water. Here we go. Watch out for the dog. Half a cup of water going in, and next step will be one teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of sea salt. And I got the teaspoons right in here. I want to make sure that I have, that's a quarter teaspoon. So four of those will equal one of these guys, and that's a teaspoon. So let's go ahead and get a teaspoon of sea salt. There's the one teaspoon of salt going into the bowl. Next, we're going to get our rye flour, and we only need one cup of rye flour. So, with this handy little cup, we're going to extract a full cup of rye. One cup of rye flour going into the measuring cup. That's one full cup of rye only one quarter cup of all-purpose flour. So only one quarter cup. Put this guy away. That way it will stay fresh. So that way we can make this again. So just one of these guys will go for the flour. Purpose, there we go. There's all your flour that you're gonna need for making Gajalan Paracas. need this anymore, so let's put this back up on the top shelf. Put that there. There. Now, we don't need sea salt anymore, I don't think. So we'll put it up here, but it'll be there if we need it again. Okay, what we're going to do with this is we are going to... We can use the spoon we used already. We're going to mix this up. All the way around, all the way. Get it all mixed up with the spoon until it gets nice and clumpy. And this will make a few kajalan padakas. Oh, it's smelling good already. Look at that rye, rye smell. Mm, 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 mm. This is going to be good. Yeah, when you got it all clumpy like that, it's 
stop stirring with a spoon. You start kneading it with your hands. So you get to work with your hands in this piece. So, so we're you, working with our hands around the So you have to knead it? We gotta knead it. We gotta want it. We gotta need to want this stuff. We're gonna need this stuff. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of this great flour, bunch it up, and knead it with your hands like this. Just to kind of give it a nice good kneading. Make sure all that water and salt and flour is mixed up as best as possible. Notice it gets nice and sticky because bread dough usually is. Okay. Once you got it all mixed together, like any clumps, any bits of flour that didn't get rolled up into, the kneading part, just kind of press it in there like that. Okay. Now, one other thing too, don't put that flour away because uh, we're going to need that to dust our table. Also, we're also going to need to use a separator in between our bread for when we make our jalan So, let's go ahead and do that now. That's what you want to do is roll it up into a log, just like that. Now, let's get the flour, the all-purpose kind. And what we're going to need to do, first and foremost, prepare your table. Okay, come on, guys, keep your fingers clean and preserved. Just take some regular flour and just kind of dust it over like this. And any baker will tell you, before you roll out dough on a table, it's always best to dust your table with flour. That way it does not stick. And also, not to forget, get some for your hand. And we're going to dust our rolling pin, just like this. Just take some in your hand, move it over, keep it over to the table here. And this ensures that your rolling pin will not get stuck with your bread. Because we are going to need this smooth as possible. We don't want our cards and cut crust to stick to the rolling pin. Good rule of thumb. In any bakery, we'll tell you. Oh yeah, you definitely need to roll your rolling pin in flour. Now, yeah, that's good and dusted. Yeah. Go ahead and give it a nice... Give it your hand there. I'm just going to spread it a little bit. Man. That should be good. Yay! We did it! Alright, okay. Let's get our bread here. Now, what we want to have is a nice big rolling log like that. What we're going to do is we're going to take this log, we're going to roll it, roll it out a bit, make it nice and good and flat. So we get a nice, circular, flat, and roll it every which way you can. Like that way, that way, make it a nice, that, so once you got it good and flat, when you got it a good, good enough size, this thing doesn't have to be perfect, we are going to reach for a glass, preferably one that is not beveled Boopy. out. Yeah. This should be fine. What we're going to do is once you got this rolled out, we're going to make, and just take a glass and just let go. Make a disc, just like that. Now, what we're also going to do is from the table, we're going to take some flour and put it between each disc. So that way your dough does not stick together. And there you go. Now, a lot of people would think that after you get all these cut out, that you could just throw away the dough that's left over. Yeah, that's not right. true. But it's not true. You can actually take all of this, roll it up into another log, and continue on. Exactly. Until you know that you can't get any more, and then you just roll the last bit of it into a flat disc. Use everything you can. Yep, nothing gets wasted in the kitchen. Nothing ever gets wasted in this kitchen. And we don't want it to either. Anywhere you can get flour, just kind of dust it with the flour. And then keep on going until you cannot go anymore. You want perfectly round discs. You don't want to go and shortchange yourself. Now, here's a little trick. Here's where the magic comes in on this. Take the rest of your dough flour and all, and just knead it back into a log, just like this. And this helps whenever you make bread or whenever you make stuff like this, it's always best, good measure. Keep working with what you got, recycle with what you got, and especially when you're rolling out bread. So, 
Here we go with more rolling. And roll it out as spaced as you can. Now this is homemade cookie. Yes, it is. We didn't go to the store, as you can see. All of these ingredients can be made from scratch. And that's what we're doing here. Everything is going to be made from scratch tonight. Now, a lot of people don't actually uh, work with uh, rye flour. I've never seen that done before. Yes, yeah, so your rye flour is available in your grocer's baker section, your bakery section. Just look where the flour is, and it comes in a small brown bag just like that. <coughs> well, we're going to actually work with rye today because rye is the traditional way of making your gardelan piratas. Egg butter is where those two eggs will come in. And egg butter is good as a topping for when this is done. But before you, or after you bake this, because we're basically gonna, we're gonna work on these. And then what's gonna happen, when that filling is done, we're gonna take all these discs and roll them out so that way they're good and flat. Then we're gonna add our filling, which is the rice and the milk when it's done and we're going to add the filling to these and then we're going to bake it at 450 degrees in the oven. That doesn't look like it will constitute for a full circle so let's do it again until nothing is left. And you do this over and over again until you got nothing left. And we got plenty of it left. So roll it into a nice big log make sure it all comes together and if you notice that it's breaking apart just add a little bit of water to help stick it back together again. Because that's the magical part of working with dough. You can add just a little bit of water and it'll return right back to the consistency you once had before because now that it's good and dry, it'll crack just like that. And it won't hold together as, as well as it used to. So, we might have to add just a little tiny bit of water. Not much, just enough to cover it. Knead it again and you'll notice that just that little bit of water will return your dough back the way it needs to be. Nice and sticky. So, roll it back into a log again and you'll see what I mean. Because then you won't see any cracks. But you have to really knead it in order to get everything mixed back in the way it was. Get it nice and moist. There we go. Now roll really, it into the log. You really know how to work that dough. Yes, I do. And look at that. Solid log. Now take that solid log and put it right there. And flatten it out with the rolling pin. Now you see how it sticks because we've uh, we've added water to it. This you know, there's a little bit of flour and it'll just roll right back out again. Flour is a godsend to any baker, and any baker will tell you use flour. Let's go ahead and use some more flour on this rolling pin. Okay, now roll it this way, make it a nice flat, circular if you can but it's more like a football shape now. So just kind of flatten it out this way and flatten it out this way. Kind of happens when you start to run out of dough. Yeah, it does. But you just keep working with it, working with it as best you can. And until, until you got the state of Michigan here. <laughs> well, I think you need a little bit of a section coming out like that for Michigan, but yeah. it's okay. It's Michigan enough. <laughs> you need to be careful talking about Michigan down here in Ohio. Know, especially in Ohio. We hate Michiganers. I don't know why. I think it's because of their football team. And now you got... Hey, does this remind you of a video game? <laughs> asteroids. <laughs> it does look like an asteroid. It does. See, this is called Cooking with Sonic Blue, the fun edition, because we always have fun in the kitchen. Absolutely. But it is possible to have too much fun in the kitchen where it becomes dangerous, so watch what you do in the kitchen. No serious rough horsing. Rough housing. Rough horsing, yeah. Rough horsing. There you go. Okay, now carefully peel that away because that didn't get quite as good of a... There we go. A little bit extra there. Just kind of stick really that out there. One more out of that. One more, and then we'll see if we can just roll the second one into just a... Or the next one into that into... Yep, we can get it. There we go. Okay, now. Can we do it, folks? Can we get one more of those discs out of this little tiny wad of dough? Let's find out. Let's find out. It's a little ball right now, so take that ball and flatten that sucker out. We need to try to get one disc. I think we could do it. We can do it. 
Yes, we can do it. Look, it's the side of somebody's face. <laughs> there's the nose, there's the mouth. Who's... Playing with dough is fun. Yes. Right there in the center. Oh, oh God, he's got a hole in the head. Oh, that's horrible. Ba -dum -ching. We, we need some drums happening here. Yeah, we need a rim shot. Somebody play your drums. Uh, can you play a rim shot for me? Thank you. Okay, now. Can we make one more? I don't know. I guess. Place we're... your bets. Place your bets right now in channel. Can Sonic Blue make one more out of this tiny ball of dough? Let's Look at the dough. size of this dough ball. It is I mean, so seriously. Small. It is so tiny. Look at this thing. Let's find out how good. Hey, it's Pac Man with legs. <laughs> For all of us that likes Pac Man. And we love Pac Man here on the. Now, now it's turning into one of those, uh, those uh, leaves. Too many cracks. Yeah, and if that happens, like I said, just add a little bit more water. Add a little bit of water to it. Yep. And a little water to it, and what we're going to do, a little flour too. I think I added a little bit too much water, but anyway. We're going to knead this a bit and get all that water and moisture back into the dough. Okay, and here we go. Okay. Can he do it? One more, that's all we need. Just a little bit of flour to help dry it out a little bit. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Now it's back the way it needs to be. Now, let's go ahead and do like that. Like that. Form it. Has to be about that size. And let's go ahead and do a little bit like this. A little bit like that. A little bit there. A little bit there. A little bit there. We did it. We used every, every last bit, bit of the dough. All the dough was used. All of it was used. Wow, we did it. Just a little extra there. We'll just fold that in. And there you go. Perfect disc. That is about the same size and thickness as the ones you've been making here. Next step. Get a little bit more flour here. And just replace some of that flour that we've uh, used up in the making of these discs. There you go. Okay. Now, let's put this aside. We don't need that. But we do need this. We're going to take one of these discs. Lay it down like that. And what we're going to need to do is flatten this down as flat as can be. But obviously not too flat. <laughs> now, about like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the filling down and then we're going to fold these guys over and we're going to crimp it with our fingers all the way down the edge. And that's what we're going to be making. Arjuna Pirakas. I hope Tanza Tarawing is saying, mmm, he's doing it good. Either that or he's going to be shouting great obscenities in Finnish by saying that I'm doing it wrong and I uh, need to go back to Finland in order to learn how to do it right. I wouldn't mind going to Finland to visit you. All you got to do is pay for my airfare and my passports. And you, and while I'm there, you can teach me a few Finnish recipes and I can learn a few on the way and then I can come home educated, experienced, the whole nine yards. I want to go too. Yeah, so I better be doing this right. <laughs> Da 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 Really? The I love Lucy I love you. Dough can make things a lot fun because let's say for instance you're rolling out some dough and then all of a sudden you get a shape that you didn't work really expect. Like say for instance right there, it's it's clearly a heart. It is. Freaking cool. <laughs> oh, I know that one. I know that one. Rakastan Sinua. What? Rakastan Sinua. Okay, translate. I love you. Ed? Finish. That's finish? That's finish. Oh, cool. Rakastan Sinua. Generous. I think we're ready for milk. Okay, make the rice the regular way, like this, so it's nice and fluffy. Stir it. And you notice there's no water there. Absolutely beautiful. Now, We are going to add two cups of milk to this and then cook it some more. Let's grab the milk and add two cups of milk. 
And here comes one cup of milk. It's a sizzling. Yes, it is. And two cups of milk going in. There. Mm. Milk rice. Yes. Now, we're going to stir this in. Make sure it doesn't clump too much. Because we're not, we need a nice creamy, creamy substance. We're going to cook this in the same way that we cook the regular rice. This milk is going to get absorbed into the rice and leave behind a nice creamy filling. That sounds good already. It does, doesn't it? Of course, I like rice. Oh, yes. So cover it and put your milk in the refrigerator. Now we're going to take our filling and give it a nice good stir. Look how sticky and creamy that is. Okay, now this is going to serve as a nice warm filling for those. Set those guys aside. Bring up the first crust. And we're just going to take... Now, here's a little helpful hint. Get some water in the same glass that you use to make your discs. Soak it in the water. That ensures that the rice will not stick to the spoon and it won't be too dry either. It's basically what we want to do. And if you would show the camera that they have to be crimped just like this. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Let's get a fresh crust here. And we're going to brush off as much of that flour as possible. Okay, Like that. Take your spoon that has been uh, soaked in some water. So that way it makes your rice a little easier to spread. You don't need that much, really. All you need to do is spread it around the middle of your crust. Just a little bit more is what it takes. Put a little bit more there. Okay, and by soaking your spoon in the water, it ensures that your fillings will not stick too much, and it will enable you to spread it a little bit easier. And that can use just a tad bit more. Right over here. And if you can help it along with your finger, do so. Don't be afraid to touch the fillings. But once you got it pretty much covered in the center, leaving enough room here, here, and on the sides to fold everything over. Now here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to pinch the end, just like that. We're going to pinch this end. Now if it's too thick, it's not going to pinch very well. If it's too thin, it's going to tear when you try to lift up and crimp it on the sides. Now we're going to lift it up like this. Take your two fingers. Crimp, pinch, crimp, pinch, crimp, right along down the side. Just like that. There you go. Dungeon Piracas. And then if we save enough for that last one over there, then we should have just enough rice and just enough. Because this would have then turned out so perfect that we would never be able to duplicate this. Well, maybe. Maybe we could. Take some of this thick in the middle here and just kind of push it out that way because we need some over here. Up and crimp. See now it's thin. It's going to tear, so be very careful when you crimp, especially if it's too thin. Because remember, some of these were really, really thin. Definitely a very interesting looking dish. Yes, very interesting and very interestingly tasting. Are we ready to cook our kajilan Yes. Well, if the answer is yes, don't ask me to say it in Finnish because I have not yet stood down that far. But say I do know finish. how to say I love you. Say it in Finnish. That's all I know how to say, really. Uh, Google Translate is a very good tool, by the way. Anyway, we've got the oven preheated at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's slide these bad boys in for 10 to 15 minutes. Checking at the 10 minute mark. See how well these are coming out. And now let's make our egg butter. We will need two chopped hard boiled eggs. So get your boiled water ready. One, carefully drop them in. Two, you don't want yolks to run out of your hard boiled eggs. We're gonna cook those for about 10 minutes until they're perfectly congealed. Now, 
what we have here is a half a cup of butter. We have a little bit extra so that way we can use it as a basing agent. So when those come out of the oven, we'll baste it with this. And then we'll add our topping with the rest of that butter and a pinch of ginger and a pinch of white pepper and these when they're done. So let's go ahead and get a bowl to prepare. Get a bowl. This one will work just nicely. And we're going to take the majority of our butter here. Let's go ahead and add our pinch of white pepper. That's a little bit more than a pinch, but that's okay. A pinch of ground ginger. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Not a half a pinch. That wasn't a pinch, that was a slap. That was a slap, no. Let's use our knife and stir all that in there. You can use a spoon if you want to, but why dirty up a spoon just to stir this in when a knife is what was used to cut the butter with? Okay. For those of you that are doing this at home, you might want to use a spoon. Because remember, cutting is for knives. But if you don't know what you're doing in the kitchen, don't do it. I know what I'm doing, so that's why I'm doing it with a knife. That's well mixed in there, and this is what's going to be used for our egg butter. Now your butter is going to need to stay at room temperature. When those guys are finished boiling, and we're going to we're going to take the shells away from them, and we're going to chop them up really good. We're going to add it to that, stir it in really good, and then let it sit at room temperature while these guys are cooking. And then when it's done, you'll have your egg butter to top over the top of it, and it's going to be awesome. Let's see how these eggs are doing. Now see, that one is cracked just a little bit. You see that there? Because when I dropped it in, it kind of went crack. So put the eggs in first, then boil your water. But it should be okay. Now again, shake, shake. Good boy. Another paw, good boy. High five. Good boy, now kiss. Now again, let me kiss, let me kiss. Good boy, good boy. Yeah, give him a nice big wet uh, no, he's not that kind of dog yet. <laughs> Keyword yet! Keyword! <laughs> okay. Get it done. What? Actually? Oh, he's got his ball. Look at this. This is no. his favorite game. Come on. Come on. <laughs> this is Halligan's ball. It is his favorite toy in the whole world. He loves playing ball so much that every time he sees somebody, he'll bring his ball to them and ask them to play a game of ball. Go get it. Not at me. Ow. <laughs> Ow. I hit my leg when you did that. And look, you brought it back. Me, me, ball. Me, me, ball. Drop it. Drop it. No, you have to take it out of his mouth. Good boy. Oh, there you go. Good boy. Sit. Sit. Stay. Stay. Crap, I can't move. Go get it. And there he goes, folks. He does mind demands. He is a very, very smart doggy. Very smart. And there was some... What the heck was that? <laughs> okay. Those eggs should be finishing up nicely. I thought it was like you started that way. I'm like, what the heck? Oh, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to start it. Okay, they're not done yet. But in about... In about three more minutes, we'll take another look. But chances are, since we look now, and it's got three more minutes to go, we'll look again in about, about six minutes. Six minutes later. I wish. <laughs> oh, if, it was on, if only it was that easy. If only it was Magic that easy. Magic of camera time. What? Magic of camera time. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Oh, or Sonic could do what he did the last time, do the, um, the, whole thing the, on the time microwave. lapse thing. That was funny. Yeah. Do a good thing. Oh, God, yeah, that would be fun. Oh, that would be fun. What did you do? He's choking. Are you choking on your own spit? Hmm? You, got, you got too excited. <laughs> <laughs> this is silly puppy. Yes, he is very silly. <laughs> Yeah. Again, come here. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Ah, 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 ah,
Oh my Jack god, that's a... Jack 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 Sit. Good boy. Kiss. Now let me kiss, kiss. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. So smart too. Yeah. He's such a smart guy. Yeah, he follows like that. We all love Alvin John. He is a very, very smart doggy. Yeah, he is. These eggs should be finished by now. We're gonna pull those off. And let them cool for a little bit because you don't want to reach in there and grab an egg. So what we're going to do, extract the water, but don't lose the eggs. And then what will help is by immediately placing them in cold water so that they'll cool down so that you can break them up even faster. Now place it on a cooler burner, one that you have not yet used. And now you can reach in and pick up the eggs. But they're still going to be warm inside, so let them sit there for a while. Now what we're going to do is just going to crack it all the way around. This one might not need to be cracked as much because we cracked it before we put it in, but that's okay. Take it over to the trash can so you don't get eggs and shells all over the place and just kind of peel it around. This one's coming off nicely. And remember, the cooler the eggs are, the easier it'll be to extract the eggshells from it. Mm -hmm. If it's still hot, then chances are the egg will still be hot and it will still attach itself to the eggshell. But once it cools down, it'll be fully congealed, fully cooled, and the eggshell will just come right off. Just like that. Beautiful. Yep. We're going to dice our egg, or chop it, or you see fit, but now this needs to be at room temperature, but there you have egg butter. Now, when this cools down, it will congeal just a bit. This is what we call in Finland egg butter. I was going to ask you to say that in Finnish, but I know you can't go ahead. No, I can't. Donza, help me out. How do you say egg butter? Good question. Okay, I'm pretty sure he'll say it, but in a place where I can't see it because I'm behind a stage with puppets on my hand. Right yeah, I'll, I'll tell you it during the show. Yes. So, Donza, please sign in to channel and tell us some of these things in Finland. Or Finnish, then, way. Fin in Finnish. And here is the finished. Hi, John. Be that. Yes. There you have it. Now you still notice that a lot of flour is still caked on the outside of that, but sometimes it's good to have flour there because it ensures it will not stick to anything that you make. You brush butter. Yeah, butter. You give it a nice glaze. I should have done that first before we put everything on the plate, but. Okay, just take the butter, the rest of the butter you've extracted with your egg butter, and let's go ahead and put these guys back on the sheet. Now, look at how nice and glossy these guys look. Once you get some butter brushed on there, look at that. Nice, nice and glossy, beautiful, shiny. Mm. You will turn into a finished chef overnight just by making kajiran pirakas, and now you know the origin. And now you know how to make it, and in a few moments, we're going to know how they taste. Okay, take a look at this. This is what it'll look like when you dust the kajalan pirakas with melted butter and baste it. Oh, I am so excited. Now here comes the best part, the filling, or the topping. This is egg butter. It goes right on the top, just like this. And just spoon it right over the top in the filling right here. There you have Kajalan Pirakas. Now, we're going to taste test these guys. So, now, do you want to try it first or shall I? Oh, I'm already here. Okay. Let's try this one. Before 
go. He looks scared. Mmm. <laughs> That's actually really good. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. I taste the ginger. I taste the white pepper, definitely. A lot of the rye. You don't really taste the rice, but you know it's there. It's like you, you taste creamy rice. Is it? Yeah. Cool. Kajalan Pirakas. Make them today in your kitchen. You'll find out it's exactly... You use the exact recipe, only double up on your egg butter. But this is some good stuff. Mmm. And real butter goes a long way, too. Mmm. I'm glad I made these. I'm really glad I made these guys. So, that one had the egg butter. These ones did not. Didn't have enough to go around, but yeah. let's find out what Sajin thinks. Okay. Okay, here goes Sajin. Okay. Are you ready to try a finished tradition? I actually am not against trying foreign food. Mm -hmm. In fact, I find it rather an interesting experience. So, I've never tried these before, ever. Don't wait till you try it. Here we go. Here it goes. Really? For real? I don't taste any bacon in there. That's weird. But, nevertheless, it's really good. It is. I love it. So there you have... Kajalan Piracas. A great Finnish tradition. I'm Sonic Blue Darkfold, and tune in next time for Cooking with Sonic Blue, and don't forget... Rakastan Sinua. Complete recipe, send an email to sonicblue at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching, and remember if you're not cooking good, you're not eating good. Bye for now.